This lecture is brought to you by Megger, a leading manufacturer of electrical test and measurement equipment. I've trusted Megger's equipment for years and witnessed firsthand their commitment to education and supporting technical schools across the country. For a limited time, Megger is offering my viewers an exclusive discount on their next purchase and products sold through U.S. distributors. Simply visit us.megger.com slash bigbadtech for all the details. Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is complex circuit analysis. Our objective is to examine a type of complex DC circuit known as a bridge network. We'll learn to analyze bridge networks by applying our previous understanding of delta and y conversions and Thevenin's theorem. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with both delta and y conversions and DC Thevenin's theorem, as illustrated in the delta and y conversions and DC Thevenin's theorems lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dim or recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. A complex circuit is an arrangement of elements that features occasions in which elements are neither purely in series nor purely in parallel with one another. The classic example of a complex circuit is a bridge network consisting of five elements, where two pairs of stacked elements form the uprights of the bridge, Rm and Rn on the left, and Rp and Rq on the right, and the fifth element, Rx, is the decking of the bridge spanning the chasm in between. You'll note that Rm is not purely in series with Rn in the left upright because of the influence of the bridge element Rx. Any current entering Rm does not necessarily travel through Rn because some of it can travel through Rx. Similarly, you will note that Rp is not purely in series with element Rq in the right upright because of the influence of bridge element Rx. Any current entering Rp does not necessarily travel through Rq because some of it can travel through Rx. Also, note that neither the top nor the bottom pair of elements, Rm and Rp and Rn and Rq, would be purely in parallel with one another because of the influence of bridge element Rx. In summary, this is a complex circuit because there exists no purely series nor purely parallel paths, but rather a complex web of paths that necessitate simplification or alternate analysis techniques. Two methods can be used to analyze bridge networks. The first necessitates the use of a delta to y conversion, and the second method necessitates the use of Thevenin's theorem. Ideally, the viewer already has ample experience with both these techniques, and as such, I'm encouraging you to get actively involved and treat this lecture as you would a series of illustrated example problems. If your answers do not match those illustrated, by all means, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Let's first examine bridge network analysis scenarios making the use of delta to y conversions. Consider a bridge network consisting of five elements. Rm, the top left upright of the bridge is 270 ohms. Rn, the bottom left upright of the bridge is 500 ohms. Rp, the top right upright of the bridge is 270 ohms. Rq, the bottom right upright of the bridge is 10 ohms. And finally Rx, the bridge band itself is also 270 ohms. Let's say we're being asked to solve for voltage across and current through bridge element Rx. Key to the solution of this problem, making use of an equivalency between delta and y configurations, is determining the nodal voltages of the bridge element Rx. Let's call these nodes A and B. There are several places to make use of an equivalency between delta and y configurations in our bridge network. First, one could convert the y configuration of Rm, Rx, and Rn into a delta. Second, one could just as easily convert the y configuration of Rp, Rq, and Rx into a delta. While easily within our reach, these y2 delta conversions would not result in a simpler circuit, and as such, let's consider other possibilities. One could convert the delta configuration of Rn, Rx, and Rq into a y, or one could just as easily convert the delta configuration of Rm, Rx, and Rp into a y. Either delta to y conversion would result in a simpler series parallel circuit. This being said, you will note that Rm, Rp and Rx are identical at 270 ohms each. This is a balanced delta configuration, and converting this to a balanced y configuration is the easiest of tasks. If we added a third node C to the top of our delta configuration, and zoomed in on just the delta configuration of interest, delta element Rab is in fact Rx between nodes A and B, delta element RBC is in fact Rp between nodes B and C, and finally, delta element RCA is in fact RM between nodes C and A. The general use delta to y conversion formula has us multiply the two delta resistors connected to the node of interest 
and divide it by the sum of all delta resistances. Given this is a balanced delta network, all delta elements are equal, and we can make use of a shortcut where each balanced Y resistor is one third the magnitude of the balanced delta resistors, where Ry equals R delta divided by three. Substituting in our given values demonstrates that Y resistor R1 is 90 ohms, as is R2 and R3. Ideally, we should be able to swap out this new Y configuration for the previous delta, and the bridge circuit will be none the wiser to the substitution. Substituting in the balanced Y configuration at nodes A, B, and C for our earlier balanced delta results in a purely series parallel circuit. Note we've gained access to an additional central node I'm calling Y. This being said, we've lost access to Rx, the bridge resistor of interest. However, if we solve for the nodal voltages at A and B, we in effect can solve for the voltage differential across the bridge resistor Rx. R1 and Rn are in series with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime with a value of 590 ohms. Similarly, R2 and RQ are in series with one another, a simplification I'm calling R double prime with a value of 100 ohms. You'll note at this level of simplification, we've lost access to our nodes of interest, A and B. Node A is internal to simplification R single prime, and similarly, node B is internal to simplification R double prime. Our single prime and our double prime are in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling our triple prime, with a value of 85.8 ohms. Our triple prime is perfectly in series with Y resistor R1. This is a perfect setup for the voltage divider rule. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates V triple prime is roughly 19.5 volts. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. Given simplification R triple prime is the parallel combination of R single prime and R double prime, V triple prime equals V single prime, which equals V double prime, and they all equal roughly 19.5 volts. Now we need to solve for voltage division within the R single prime and R double prime paths. Within the R single prime path, VA is the voltage across resistor RN. R1 and RN are perfectly in series with one another. This is again a perfect setup for the voltage divider rule. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that VA is roughly 16.5 volts. Similarly, within the R double prime path, R2 is perfectly in series with RQ. This is again a perfect setup for the voltage divider rule. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that VB is roughly 1.9 volts. The voltage of interest, VAB, is VA minus VB. Substituting our given values demonstrates VAB equals roughly 14.6 volts, positive to negative, left to right. With the understanding that the bridge network is none the wiser to the substitution of the balance Y for the balance delta, we are allowed to make the assumption that the balance delta also experiences a 14.6 volt differential from node A to node B. Delta resistor Rx experiences a voltage drop of 14.6 volts, and an application of Ohm's law demonstrated it experiences 53.9 milliamperes of current traveling left to right. In summary, substitution of a Y for a delta in a complex circuit results in a comparatively simpler series parallel circuit, and the analysis of the simple series parallel circuit map back to the original complex circuit containing the delta configuration yielded our desired results. Let's try the analysis of the same complex bridge circuit using Thevenin's theorem. If everything I've been saying to you is true, we should ideally obtain the same results for Rx. Bridge network analysis using Thevenin's theorem necessitates we solve for two properties, ETH, the Thevenin equivalent voltage, and RTH, the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen by the load. In this case, our load of interest is bridge resistor Rx between nodes A and B. Let's start by solving for ETH, the Thevenin equivalent voltage. First, we need to remove the load resistor. Then we need to determine the open circuit voltage between A and B. Note the removal of the bridge resistor Rx, the load of interest, has fundamentally changed the nature of this circuit in that Rm and Rn are perfectly in series with one another, as are Rp and Rq. The series path formed by Rm and Rn is in parallel with the series path formed by Rp and Rq. Nodal voltage A is the voltage across Rn. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that VA is roughly 26 volts. Similarly, nodal voltage B is the voltage across RQ. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that VB is roughly 1.4 volts. VAB is VA minus VB. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates VAB is roughly 24.5 volts. This is the Thevenin's equivalent voltage, ETH. Let's put these figures aside for a moment and solve for the Thevenin's equivalent resistance, RTH. 
First, we need to remove the load resistor. Then we need to remove the voltage source by replacing it with a short circuit. Finally, we need to determine the resistance at the terminals of interest A and B. This may take some visualization on your part, but the removal of the bridge resistor Rx, the load of interest, and the shorting of the source has fundamentally changed the nature of this circuit. Let us consider the shorted source another node, which I'll call D. Rm and Rn are joined at both node A and node D. Similarly, Rp and Rq are joined at both node B and node D. Rm and Rn between node A and D are perfectly in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime, or R single prime has a value of 175.3 ohms. Similarly, Rp and Rq between nodes B and D are perfectly in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling R double prime. With evidence equivalent resistance between nodes A and B is R single prime in series with R double prime. Substituting our given values results in a Thevenin's equivalent resistance of roughly 185 ohms. The Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by bridge resistor Rx is therefore a 24.5 volt source in series with 185 ohm resistor. This much simpler pure series circuit can now be used to solve for the electrical properties of Rx, a 270 ohm resistor. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that Vx is roughly 14.6 volts. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that Rx experiences 53.9 milliampers of current. These are the same results we obtained earlier using the delta to y conversion. I have confidence our answers are correct. Take a moment to compare and contrast the two methods. Which method was easier? Bridge circuit analysis using delta to y conversion or bridge circuit analysis using Thevenin's theorem? The answer is, it depends. Given we had a balanced delta configuration, the equivalent balanced y was super simple to obtain. This may not be the case for all scenarios. This being said, note we had to do a multi-step series parallel circuit analysis using the delta y conversion, and this is only valid for one condition, notably when Rx happens to equal 270 ohms. Any change in Rx would invalidate the entire analysis. The Thevenin's theorem, however, necessitated only two steps, solving for ETH and RTH, and from there it's a simple pure series analysis. This method also yields an equivalent circuit valid for any load element between node A and B. I'm clearly in the Thevenin's theorem camp, however, both methods yield valid results. Alright, that's about it for today. In conclusion, this lecture examined the analysis of complex circuits, circuits in which elements are neither purely in series nor purely in parallel with one another in the form of a bridge network using delta to y conversions and Thevenin's theorem. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.